Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph Marbach. At Georgian Court University, we're committed to educating the public about the importance of higher education and its impact on our communities. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Georgian Court University, the New Jersey Association of Health Underwriters, New Jersey's benefits specialist, Fedway Associates, Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. Adler Aphasia Center, helping stroke and brain injury survivors recover their speech. And by NJM, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and more, with a focus on safety and financial stability. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, small news, big news, true Jersey. And by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got this? Here it is, man. Look at it. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. You always used to say, tuna made you feel barfy. Well, that was 20 years ago, Grandma. That's right, people change. You're not our little Pete anymore. You know, the bail business isn't all that complicated. Anyone can learn the nuts and bolts. But there's one instinct that separates the great bail bondsman from the rest. What's that? You gotta be able to look a prospective client in the eye and ask yourself, is this someone I trust? God, is she good. Uh, that's Margot Martindale, uh, award-winning actress. That is from Sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete. Uh, to Amazon series. Amazon drops on Amazon January the 13th. In uh, 2017, we'll be seeing this then. Well, who were you there with? And that's with Giovanni Ribisi. Talented actor. Oh, so talented and so wonderfully kind and... Fabulous person to be the lead of the show. Could you set up this whole Sneaky Pete thing for us? The Sneaky Pete is a, uh, is a, I'm the matriarch of a family. My, uh, Giovanni plays my grandson. And uh, he, we haven't seen him since he was 10 years old. And he, we don't know where he's been. My daughter and I had a falling out and they ran off. And uh, he spent every summer with us. And he's been in prison. And his cellmate, he talked about our farm all, all the time and how wonderful his, and idyllic his, his, his life was on the farm with us. And, uh, and uh, his cellmate gets out and comes to our farm and says, Grandpa, Grandma, I'm home. So he's a con artist. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, we have to watch. It's great. But it, it turns out that... Everybody's a bit of a con. Everybody's a bit of a con. Everybody's, Not you. It's a lot about, oh, I got a lot. I got a past. I've got a past. You have a past. I have a past. And Let, a future. <laughs> can, can we speak about your past for a second? Mm-hmm. You're from Texas. I am. Jacksonville, Texas. Jacksonville, Texas. You admit this. I admit it with a huge heart. You I, love Texas. I love You're it. not a Dallas Cowboy fan, are you? Yeah. Well, you know, our president, Neil Shapiro, is a big Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to always root for the Cowboys. Well, we do because he does. No, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, you better. <laughs> and and uh, so let me ask you, but the Dallas thing, the t Texas thing, to New York, acting, the whole, how does that happen? Oh, I went, I, I got a scholarship at the University of Michigan, went north, Michigan, got a job at Harvard, went to Harvard, with, at Harvard. You went to Harvard? Rutgers. I went, <laughs> let me just say, <laughs> I didn't go to Harvard, I acted at Harvard. Uh, and <laughs> Okay, I got it. But you know, that used to work a long time ago when I'd- <laughs> Yes, yes, I got it. Uh, no, I didn't go to Harvard. You didn't go to Harvard. Uh, uh, but you acted at Harvard. I acted at Harvard with Christopher Reeve and met wow. my, uh, and Jonathan Frakes, who was a friend of mine, his girlfriend showed up and his girlfriend and I became best friends and we moved to New York together. Wow. 1974, that's how. When did you know that you wanted to be in this business? I didn't ever know that I wanted to be in this business. 
I just wanted to act since I was 16. I didn't know there was a business that went with it. What do you mean? I just <laughs> learned that last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, business, women, Hollywood. You didn't get the whole... I didn't, I didn't get that memo, no. Uh -uh. No? No, no. You just wanted to work? I just wanted to work. I just wanted to act. I, I love acting. It's just so much fun. I'm so fortunate to get to do that, to make a living now. You know, the other series that people will recognize you from, The Americans? Mm-hmm. Frank Langella? Frank Langella. Um, he's good. I'd say he's pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to take a look uh, at you. I think he is so extraordinary. I love him. He's great. Frank Langella. Together with uh, Margot Martindale from The Americans. Let's take a look. They trust you, Gabriel. They believe in you. Yeah, I hope so. Do you hear yourself? The pastor already told his wife, there are no good choices here. First, there are no choices, now there are no good choices. I'd say we're making progress. OK, so here, go ahead. I'd. We stop. Uh, will we fix what? I'd say we're making progress. I shouldn't have said it like that. As opposed to? I'd say we're making progress. What's the difference? Um, Texas, I. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> you heard that? Of course, I hear it. I, it makes me crazy. You hear things that others don't hear. Yeah, let's go but ahead. here's the question. Yes. With so much extraordinary television like this, Sneaky Pete, is there more and more, are there more and more opportunities for terrific actors in television than ever before? Absolutely. Well, the movies are not well, as... Well, you know what? Sneaky Pete, for example, is... 10 episodes of a series that you see all at once, and that is a movie. That's really where it's happening, uh, except for the gigantic movies. You know, I have a lovely little movie out now, The Hollers, but Hollers. It, was, it was made for, you know, very little money and, and you know, finally got bought by Sony Classics, but it's, uh, it's hard to get a, just a little small story out there. It's big blockbusters. Otherwise, television is a great place for everything. What stage? I, I've done so much stage. Love, it. love, love, love it. But I, I did a thousand plays, you know. Steel Magnolias. I did Steel Mag the original Steel Magnolias. With Dolly Parton. She no, Dolly Parton she played me. Oh, 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 oh. Look Don't out, give me that. Steve. Did you did you see the eye you just gave me? <laughs> Look at. I'm no. from Jersey. I picked that up. <laughs> That's good. No, yeah, she, play, she played my part in the movie. She played your part. I love that. So in this business, which is not a business to you, or you just realized it was a business, <laughs> in all seriousness, the key to, from your perspective, so many people who watch, who want to go in this business, realize where we are, 66 in Broadway. I mean, we had so many extraordinary people here. What a great location, right? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. One of the keys for you to continue to work successfully and do meaningful work is? Find something that's a little different each time at this stage and uh, challenge myself. That's challenge yourself? Well, yeah. Challenge myself with something new. Be, I, I can't, I have to, because I've been so many different people, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to find something new in the person. Uh, you know, I think crazier probably is the best place for me. Maybe I can go crazy or maybe I can... Haven't done that yet? Hmm? I don't think... No, I haven't been crazy. I've been meaner than a snake, but I haven't been crazy. But you've been married for a few years. 30, almost 31 years. So here's my question about that. For those of us who have a tendency sometimes to, let's just say, take... Our work home. What about you? I'm sure I have, uh, but my husband is extremely tolerant. And is that my, the word we're going with? He's really, he's, he's the perfect, we're perfect for each other. He's a musician. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a lyric, he's not a lyric, he told me, kill me if I ever say that again. He's a beautiful tenor. So he's in, I'm going to say, the, I'm going to say the business, you're going to tell me it's not a business. He is mostly singing uh, classical music now. He's in the arts. Mm -hmm. You're in the arts. We met 
in a restaurant, and uh, we're both from Texas, and it worked out. But, I mean, working in a restaurant. But here's the part I'm curious about. I don't want to belabor this, but I, and, I, and folks who watch one-on-one -on -one know I ask this question a lot. The rejection part, the part where you have to deal with, no, uh, Margaret, this, it's not right. We're, not, we're going in a different direction. You're not what we're looking for. And, and broadcasting is not your part of the arts, but trust me, there's enough rejection. I bet there is, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, here's my question. How have you and how do you deal with that? I believe that they made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's them, not you. Always. Where did you, I have to ask you, where did you get this fascinating confidence? I, I, I guess I, I, my mother, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm, I've, I've always been confident at certain things and extremely insecure in other things. I'm very confident as an actress. But not always. I mean, there are things when I, <laughs> I feel, okay, I've, do, I've done some things where I felt really insecure. Yeah. Yeah, thinking that I didn't do it, uh, I'm not going to say. Well, you know, it hasn't happened recently. Well, go ahead. Come on, give it up. Let's no, go. No, 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 no. What do you mean, no? Uh, no, I mean, you know, just where I, uh, I, I didn't deliver like I should have. Okay. You learned from it. Absolutely. Animated series? Uh, yes, I play myself. What is it? Bojack Horseman. It's a... Who do you play? I play Margot Martindale character actress. <laughs> I thought it was a steamed character actress. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, come on. Steamed. So set this yeah, up Margo for Margo Martindale, steamed character actress. So when, when I come into the room, they go, Margo Martindale, steamed character actress, uh, could you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I was doing The Millers on CBS and with Will Arnett playing my son, and he said, you're going to come do my new cartoon. I said, no, I don't, want, I don't want to do anything else. He said, yes, you are. I said, I don't want to. He said, the part is Margot Martindale character actress. You have to. This. It's really, and it's fabulous show. Fan, fantastic. What? Will's wonderful in it. That's on where? Uh, Netflix. Netflix. I, I got to tell you something. You, um, you work a lot. You do meaningful work. And you have a great positive attitude. And I'm, I don't know if it has something to do with coming from Texas. The sky is really big there, you know. It's a big, yeah. The world is big. Over in Jersey, it's a different sky. <laughs> <laughs> Different sky. Yeah, it is. It's, I, I, it's a little more cynical, but no. But but we see the world differently. I, it's so, it very, works for us though. I think wide open spaces really do something. We'll talk later. Okay. So Margot uh, Martindale, I did not mean to offend any of our friends uh, over in Jersey. Don't take it the wrong way. See, now I'm in trouble. You are uh, in trouble. No, I'm not. Uh, Sneaky Pete, uh, thank you. I got to plug Sneaky Pete, the Americans, and. The Hollers. The Hollers, and what's uh, the animated series? Bojack Horseman. Oh my God! Why don't you just tell me what not to plug, uh, Margot? Don't, don't plug it. Just thank you I'm so much. Delighted to be it's here. It's an honor to have you. Thank here you very, very, very Appreciate much. It. Come back. <laughs> okay. Stay with us. Be right back after this. I, Jersey. I love Jersey. Stop. You know that. We'll be right back. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion. Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. All right, now that we are properly dressed for dinner, just one more thing. Safety glasses? Would you pour the wine, please? Uh. Why? What the hell? Why are we doing this? Just pour the wine. It's fine. It's fine. Like this. Go ahead. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> hey, no. Stop moving. Okay. See, look, I'm holding still. How is it? Why is this happening? My brain is signaling these electro pads to move my arm, and my arms are signaling you so you're to move yours. So you actually can't control me. <laughs> This is torture. I can't even enjoy my dinner. Don't disobey me. <laughs> I can that's nuts. Uh, that's, that's you guys. Uh, Carrie Byron, 
uh, <laughs> co-host of the White Rabbit Project, and Tori Belici, uh, co-host of the White Rabbit Project, Netflix. Yep. What was that? Well, that was a that was a little demonstration we were doing. That's some amateur neuroscience, if you will. We were doing a uh, themed episode for White Rabbit Project that was about um, technology that you can apply to give yourself superpowers. And I was looking for something that would do mind control. And, you know, hypnosis, none of that's going to work. So I found this guy who did neuroscience, and we hooked up these electrodes to me and hooked it up to him. She's sadistic. I invite him to dinner. She's got issues. Who are you people? <laughs> Who are you? Seriously. No. We, we are lucky. We got lucky because we, we kind of fell into a job and our skill set ranges from like blowing stuff up to building <laughs> c crazy contraptions. And now we found a new home at Netflix doing the show White Rabbit Project. And we are just building and recreating and, you know, investigating stuff in history, World War II weapons. Uh, speed freaks. I mean, each episode has a different theme. But the, but but here's the thing, Tori. The premise. All right, here's the, the premise is uh, three hosts go down a rabbit hole to investigate topics, science, pop culture, and history using a ranking system based off. Of, there's a whole description here. But what's it? What? All right. So so you know that moment. <laughs> what? what are you talking? <laughs> oh, but hold on. Wait a minute. He goes like this. Hold on. He goes like this to me because you're Italian as well. Yeah. Well, we're American, yeah. but your family is originally sent. from Sicily. Sicily. Mine's yeah. from Naples. Yeah. And you're from where in California? Uh, Monterey, California. And I was joking before we got on the air. I said, yeah, I come from a similar place, Jersey, New Jersey. And you said, that's it's, right. It's, a, it's the same place. Like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, come to Monterey. I mean, it's, the people are very similar to New Jersey. I'm just saying, you'll go there and you'll go, hey, I'm home. You'll, feel like, right? you, you'll feel like you're home. It's all right. I'm sorry. I, I, to me, all roads lead to Jersey in my world, but I'm sorry. So going back to the show. You'll right. be able to watch Enough this in New Jersey me. on Netflix. Say that again? You'll be able to watch it in New Jersey, so the road leads what there. What do you think? Sure. New Jersey's another country? Of course you can watch it on Netflix. <laughs> I was just trying to, like, you know, You're trying to bring it back? I'm sorry. Bring it, bring it back. Why don't you just take over the show? Okay? That's, really? Okay. Is, is, is that a little Jersey attitude <laughs> yeah, for you? got some questions so, there. Uh, I'm not using them. So how did you guys meet? Uh, well, we were uh, originally met on Mythbusters. Uh, we were both working on that show, and we spent over a decade developing a really strange skill set that is only applicable to entertainment because you can't really shoot guns, wire explosives, and weld in a cubicle. So we, we, we've got this opportunity to have a new show on Netflix, and we thought it would be really fun to do Where'd something. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in San Francisco area. So you're both from out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we're a little weird. No, come on. That, 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 come on. No, but come on. You guys over here are like, oh, the guys in California, they're all weird over there. No, no we don't. We don't. True. On public television, we do not stereotype. I just want you to know Good. that. Good. We're different. So uh, I just stereotyped. <laughs> I I said, yeah. Yeah, you got that? You picked it up? We're very urbane. He's good. So uh, <laughs> he is good. So that being said, seriously, back to the show. <laughs> Who's the audience? Who's the audience? Well, you know, we when don't we were say on, everybody. <laughs> all over the world, and that's a cool thing. Is our show is going to the global platform, all over the world, because of the whole Netflix thing? Uh, mm -hmm. It's be, it's not just because of the Netflix thing. It's because the content of the show is very universal. It's we're we're looking at crazy things in science, technology, engineering, history, uh, folklore. You know, it's it's kind of a very universal show, and I think that's why we we're hitting the global platform. Well, give us an example. We just saw this whole thing where you were screwing around with him with your mind, which freaked me out. Weird. Give us another really interesting one that will cause people to say, I want to check that show out. We did, uh, we were, there's one with sp uh, speed freaks and we're looking at all different types of people who are into, you know, crazy speed. And, Going fast. And we, not just had to. What are you interpreting for I, him I, now? I, I saw your face. You're like, hmm. you're like, what's the speed? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so we built a, a replica, 1902 replica land speed car. Uh, back in 1902, this guy Baker built this thing called the torpedo, and it looked very wow. aerodynamic. Back then, all the you know cars looked like horse and buggy, and so they weren't aerodynamic. This guy went for the world record, but ended up crashing, so never recorded his speed. So I rebuilt it according to the specs, took it out to the desert to see how fast I could get it up to to see if I could, you know, break that, his speed record, right? And as a true historian, <laughs> you replicated the whole thing by almost crashing continually. Yeah, the, the brakes failed and I almost uh, crashed. 
Wait a minute. Are yeah. you, was it dangerous? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. What'd you have on? I had a helmet and, you know, five-point harness, but still, you're going 80 miles an hour oh and you God. crash into... In a homemade prototype, <laughs> yeah. replicating a car that crashed the first time around. What could go wrong? See, I told you we were weird in California. Did you... Uh, fascinated by science as a kid? Uh, yes. Fascinated? Fa to, to this day. Because? Um, it's really just curiosity, and I've always been a curious person. I've got an artistic background, and I think it's sort of the same thing. Artistic? More uh, destructive. Like, like, I almost set my parents' house on fire twice when I was a kid. What was it, like, last week? I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> see, now, 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 see, now. See, I'm sorry. My producers are so mad at me for doing this right now. They're like, take this seriously. I do take it very seriously. Right, no, this is very, yeah. You can I'm tell. I'm sorry, what do you want me to ask? Go ahead, I'll ask. <laughs> this is a very serious topic. They want to ask, what is the connection to STEAM? Oh, to STEAM. Yes. Science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics. We oh, want to teach. You just got real serious. I got serious. Yeah, that's good. It's public television. We don't fool around here. Yeah. <laughs> STEAM. Well, you know, we, we've, our audience has always been very science-oriented, and we, we came up using science as a tool. So we are investigating you know, the, the latest in sciences and technology, clearly engineering in the building, art, that's, that's, that's easy for me. It's a, that's my passion. And, well, there's always math in everything you do, so. Mm. But we also like to do crazy stuff on the show, as you can see. You know, so, we're, we're definitely putting our lives, you know, we're human guinea pigs, I guess you could say. That's what, have, what haven't you done that you say to yourselves, we're going to do, or we'd like to do? We always figure out a way to do everything we want to do, mostly. But are you serious? But there's a few mostly. things we haven't done. And, you know, if... By choice? If, well, no, because either the Canadian government won't let us do it, <laughs> or... We what want, does the I Canadian want to go government over, have to do with it? I want to go over the Niagara Falls in a barrel. Wouldn't that be cool? Build your own, like, build a barrel that was... And this might happen. If we get season two of White Rabbit, this it's is definitely happening. something that's on the, the list. Explain this again. Uh, going over the Niagara Falls in a barrel. Describe the barrel. Yeah. However you want to build it, but like build it to the point where a person could survive every single time. How would you know that? That's a good question. They're not going to let him do it. Don't worry that much. But I mean, we could test. <laughs> we could test. No, but you could test with you know an accelerometer how much what? an accelerometer. To see how fast it's going. So to that, see what that, kind of G's you're so doing you on hit, the body. The accelerometer will tell you how many G's. Got it, it. It experience. Do you have family that cares about you? <laughs> I'm just curious. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I text his mom every now and then just to say he's okay. Uh, I tell her Who? after what I do. So I don't tell her what I'm going to do. I tell her after I do it and then I was okay. When you got this gig and you described the gig to your respective loved ones, how did you describe it? Uh, my husband married into it. My family's used to it because, you know, for the past decade, we've been doing wild and crazy things, you know, on cable. And so this this actually seems calm <laughs> compared yeah. to some of the things we've done. Yeah, it, it, they were all super excited, the fact that we were on Netflix, just because that seems to be the future of the way people are viewing, right? Because all 10 episodes will go up and you could binge watch or you could space it out and watch however you want. So they were really excited about that. But... It just also freed us up to do kind of things that we weren't allowed to do on cable. So the question about getting not just young people, but people in general, viewers, interested in science, but doing it in a very entertaining way. I mean, is that, in all seriousness, mm -hmm. is that the ultimate goal or is just we're trying to entertain people? Well, here, here's the thing is we use it as a tool and we're having fun. And if you're watching us have fun, you have fun too. And it's almost like, Hiding the broccoli in the cheese sauce. You're having so much fun, you forget you're learning something. Why do you have to be so negative about the broccoli? <laughs> <laughs> Why is broccoli taking a hit? But you, I, we, the, the <laughs> point is well taken. PBS is very fair to broccoli. PBS is very fair to broccoli. <laughs> and we love cheese. broccoli. And cheese. Have you, yes. No, no, cheese is... You broccoli. can't deny that cheese makes broccoli better. I have no idea where this conversation is going, but I'm thankful we have a minute left. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Got a minute left. What have we not touched on? Um, we do so many crazy things in this episode. I shoot lightning bolts out of my hands. Uh, what? Yep, Carrie goes for a ride in an indie car. I mean, it's literally we're doing over-the-top crazy stuff all in the name of entertainment and science. Did you miss anything? 
don't think so. It's on Netflix? You're, yeah, yeah, you're pretty okay. covered. So here we go. It is called The White Rabbit Project. It can be seen on Netflix. Uh, so explain the Netflix thing to people. They you Netflix. Go, you go online, Netflix you is subscription-based, and then you can we watch... We got it in our house. You can watch everything that they it. offer. So my wife and I can just watch you guys anytime we want. Anytime. On, I shouldn't say on demand, but you're right there, because we yeah. paid for it. He gets it. You get it. I get it. He gets it. Us millennials get it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't know. Stop laughing. I'm not laughing at that. Carrie Byron and Tori Balacci. <laughs> oh, you ruined it. <laughs> you're good. I didn't leave these two alone. Quick, say it again. Balacci. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Georgian Court University, the New Jersey Association of Health Underwriters, Fedway Associates, Choose New Jersey, Adler Aphasia Center, and by NJM. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hi, I'm Linda Bowden. Aphasia is a language disorder that occurs from a stroke or a brain injury. My dad had a neurological disorder that no one could diagnose. Although his intellect was intact, his speech was getting worse. Then we learned he had aphasia and we saw firsthand how isolating it can be. It is possible to help those with aphasia improve their communication skills and regain the confidence to live their lives fully. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with aphasia, there is hope.